Good morning. Somebody once said that sorrows shared are halved and joys shared are doubled. Thank you all for sharing this joyful day with us. We're incredibly proud of the graduates and their achievements this year. And we'll be watching with anticipation to see your future successes. Now I'd like to invite our colleague, Minister George Chochos to the podium for the invocation. Let us assume the posture of our choosing. Oh, gracious God, we gather today in celebration of the extraordinary accomplishment of the Pivot Fellows. We celebrate the courage to embark in a new venture as the inaugural class to journey into unknown territory, relying on their brilliance and the dedication of those who believed in their future. We celebrate the hard work, determination, the commitment of the fellows, faculty, staff, and all who made this possible. And we celebrate and honor the families who now see the fruit of hard work and long hours, as well as sacrifices of time and presence for a better tomorrow. We also celebrate and honor the relationships and partnerships that brought us to this moment from both the public and private sectors to engender a new narrative for those impacted by the criminal justice system and reimagining what's possible. For all of this and more, we say amen. amen. Good morning. You know, it's hard for me to express my enthusiasm and excitement about today's graduation, because just a year ago, we were in the middle of what seemed like endless meetings as we proposed and planned a new program that was the first of its kind anywhere. And today, we're celebrating our first class of Pivot Fellows, 15 courageous, resourceful, and inspiring people I care about deeply. I want to acknowledge the Pivot team, starting with my co-director, Pietro Rivoli, who brought the McDonough School of Business's resources and expertise, while also showing its tremendous heart to support this program. And of course, to Dean Paul Almeida for immediately seeing and supporting our vision. I want to thank Alyssa Lovegrove, Joshua Miller, George Chochos, and Aaliyah Graves-Brown who have been managing and running this program on a daily basis from its very inception. And I want to thank the many people from the McDonough School of Business, from the Prisons and Justice Initiative, who have worked so hard to make this program a success. And that includes the faculty who join us here on the stage, who have taught for this program over the past months. And I want to express our appreciation and thanks to our outside partners, without whom the Pivot program would not have been possible. The DC Department of Employment Services has been an invaluable partner from day one, and I'm very grateful to Director Unique Morris Hughes, Deputy Director Charles Jones, and the entire DOES team that has worked so closely with us from the beginning. I want to acknowledge the Mayor's Office on Returning Citizen Affairs, directed by Brian Ferguson, which has also been a tremendous partner. And we're very grateful for the support we received from the Minority Business Development Agency, which is within the Department of Commerce. And I'm so glad that Nikita Chambers and Ebony Mack are here with us today. Today's ceremony is not only the inaugural graduation of the Georgetown Pivot Program, but it honors the first ever university-run program that provides an extended period of academic instruction in business and the liberal arts, and supports employment prospects and entrepreneurship projects specifically for returning citizens. And so to our Pivot Fellows, I want you to know that you are pioneers. You have broken new ground. You're helping to rewrite the script about the formerly incarcerated and to create success stories. You are helping to show society in DC and nationwide that people shouldn't be thrown away, discriminated against, or stigmatized because of mistakes they've made in their past and for which they've already paid a very steep price. You should be very proud of what you've accomplished this year 
and your families, and I'm so thrilled to see so many family members joining us here today, should also be very proud. And I see that there are a lot of children who have joined us here today, and I got to meet some of them earlier. And I want you to know specifically, and listen up, kids, you should be really, really proud of your parents for what they've done and accomplished this year. And I think that I speak for everyone on the Pivot team when I say that we could not be more proud of you and what you've done this year and what you're going to accomplish in the future. You are part of our family. So congratulations to our graduates today. Now the Pivot Fellows voted for their speakers who will come and say a few words. They're gonna represent the other fellows, and they're going to speak from the heart about what this program has meant to them this year. So I'd like now to invite first Corey Pollard to the stage, and then he'll be followed by Yemi Oladiji. Corey. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Corey Pollard, for those who don't know. Before I speak to everyone else here, I would like to speak to the Pivot Fellows and also some of the Pivot staff. I wanted to say how proud I am of each and every one of us, but also say how rough it's truly been for each and every one of us. You see, throughout all of us, we have been to over or experienced over 20 funerals, staff, and students alike. So we have experienced death, but we also have experienced a rigorous pivot schedule. We have experienced a rigorous internship, and we had to steady and juggle our family, our children, and other responsibilities. But throughout all this, I've seen a lot of growth. I've seen growth within Marcus. Where's Marcus at? And the way he handles everything. I've seen growth with Khadija, who was just on Channel 5 this morning, and the way she speaks in front of people now. I've seen growth in Lawrence, who was the first person I met in the program and didn't know anything about what he wanted to do, and now he has a direction. I've seen growth in Marquise, who now is going to open up a successful detail shop, well, mobile detail shop. Sherry, she has about three or four businesses, y'all, if y'all didn't know and Troy Burner, who is one of my business partners. I've seen growth in all, all of y'all, and I want to say that we did it. It's not over, but we did do it. Now to all of our guests. I want to tell you, take a few moments to tell you my story. See, my story started on July 18, 2018. This is when I was released from federal prison. I had it all together. I had all my HVAC certifications. I had skills in architectural design. I knew that I was going to get hired, but day after day, eventually week after week, and then month after month, I got constantly told no. Same results. So in my head, one day I just said, you know what? I'm back. I'm back to the previous lifestyle, the previous way that I used to make money. But on the very day that I said that, I met a man, Charles Jones. And after finally getting me down to the Department of Employment Services, he actually set me down, and then he kind of broke me down. See, his mission was to pull me back in because he's seen the decisions I was making, and he's seen the avenues in which I was about to go. So along him, along with the rest of the Department of Employment Services, which is incorporated of a lot of my mothers, a lot of my sisters, a lot of my brothers, they all personally stripped my old personality and helped me form a new one. Then Charles introduced me to Joshua Miller. Josh introduced me to Mark, Alyssa, and George. And see, this is how I became a Pivot Fellow. This is how I was finally given some semblance of hope. And it was hope beyond just getting a job, but actually creating something that could create jobs within a community. So I would like to take this time to thank all of the professors, all of the staff.
I'm kind of I'm kind of nervous because uh, Professor Welch is back then. I think she has a notepad. She's, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to do good. <laughs> um, Professor Mayo, I learned about a lot of fish, <laughs> and I also learned about the market. I learned so much with Professor Ryan, who's kind of been like a friend and mentor. See, each and every one of them, they actually embraced us not just as students, but as family. And now I would like to take the time to thank my internship, and they're actually here, y'all. Tom Gallis, Troy McGee, and Cheryl. They all embraced me. Tom Gallis actually has me coming in at 7 in the morning because that's the only time he has time. But when he talks to me, he doesn't talk to me about how I can work for his company for a long time. He talks to me about how he'll work beside me to help me create my own company. Thank you. See, when I make this next statement, it goes for all of us. Pivot in partnership with the Department of Employment Services and in partnership with all the interns, they changed and possibly saved all our lives. So I'm going to end this with a quote. And I don't even know who said this, but I know I heard it. I thought it was Martin Luther King, but I couldn't find it online. <laughs> but he said, I may not be the man that you feel I could be. I may not even be the man that you feel I should be. I might not even be the man that you feel I can be. But I thank the Lord Almighty I'm not the man that I once was. You see, I'm no longer saying I'm back like the day when I met Charles Jones, but I am saying I am here. See, I will never go back, and I have Pivot to thank for that. follow behind Corey. Good morning. Um, I am the quiet pivot fellow. And right now I think my class is punking me by putting me up here because they know I'm quiet. But um, I want to talk to you about returning citizens and the obstacles that they face. Adjusting to being back home. The changes that occurred in your absence. Finding a place to stay, probation, parole, even after you try to get your life together on the outside. And I think the biggest question that I asked myself after coming home was, how will I sustain a way to live? How will I sustain a living for myself? And this question plagued me a lot, more so after I was turned down repeatedly for employment. A lot of the places I went to, I received a no. But hearing no so many times built a resilience in me that I didn't even know that was being created. I kept asking myself at certain times, why did I keep trying? When I landed an interview with Alyssa Lovegrove for a program called Georgetown Pivot, I was excited, but not overly so. But then by the time I received a call back for an interview with Josh Miller, I have to say I was beginning to feel hopeful. Then there was a test, so not so hopeful. That day I met Sophia McKinney and another guy, but he didn't make it. The rest is already history. Over the past eight months, we have embarked on a journey that will be with us forever. I am happy to have taken this journey with every Pivot member. Although I'm quiet a lot of the times, I have observed amazing qualities in my classmates. I have observed diligence, perseverance, resiliency. They are motivated, adaptable individuals. 
The responsibility of civic duty to the community is at the forefront of their minds, their hearts, and their businesses. They are more than admirable. They are all leaders. And being a part of the Pivot program, we have blazed a trail that many others will track. Guys, we are the inaugural class of Georgetown Pivot Program 2019. We have had many highlights throughout the program, including pitch competitions, networking events, and all the supporters we've met along the way. We've had many tense moments as well while completing the program, but I know that I can speak for every Pivot member when I say that if we had it to do it all again, we would. It's clear that the program didn't come out of nowhere, and it is the result of dedicated effort from many different areas. For example, this program is the brainchild of two very intelligent people, Pietra Rivoli and Mark Howard. I wanna speak for my class in saying that we are all grateful that you guys created this program, that you guys had the idea to actually bring it all the way to fruition because here we all are now. It's impacted 15 different lives. And for that, thank you. I also wanna, so I'm gonna go through a lot of thank yous. You can hold for everybody at the end. <laughs> um, we've had many directors in the program. Alyssa Lovegrove, which is a genius. Like, there's no doubt about that. She's gone out and advocated for us with interns, with businesses. She's been amazing. Josh, ah, uh, Josh. <laughs> the tenacity of Josh, Josh is amazing because when we are not doing what we're supposed to do, Josh is right there making sure that we do everything we need to do to be great and successful. George, I wanna say thank you to George because if you get to uh, school on time, he has many gems for you. I think he needs a class of his own. Then we've had many others for support. Kelly, Aaliyah, Lily, thank you guys so much. Also, we want, I wanna say thank you to the professors who share all their knowledge with us. There's been so many to name. I have my favorites and I hope I'm making Professor Welsh proud right now. <laughs> India, I'm not sure where she is, but she reached out to us with her network and she was able to make sure that all of us got paired with mentors. I wanna say thank you to her and the mentors that we've had along the way. I'm also, I also would like to say thank you for uh, the support of Department of Employment Services, Charles Jones and Charles Smith, very helpful in this process as advocates, as counselors in the whole process. And to the internships, Everyone who said yes, you don't know how amazing that feels to hear someone say yes. To everyone who provided us with internships, thank you. We appreciate it. I would also like to thank the families and friends for all of the encouragement. Not just our family and friends, but family and friends of our professors and staff and faculty that came and taught us and came and talked to us. Thank you as well. I would like to end the quote end on a quote from Nelson Mandela. Difficulties break some men and make others. No ax is sharp enough to cut the soul of a sinner who keeps trying, one armed with hope that he will rise even in the end. Thank you so much. You all look so beautiful out there. <laughs> we are so honored and grateful to have Professor Melissa Bradley as our graduation speaker today. Melissa has been a member of the Georgetown community for more than 30 years, and throughout that time has never stopped giving back to the community and the university. In 1989, Melissa graduated from Georgetown Business School. 
And in 2012, she began to teach courses in impact investing, social entrepreneurship, peer-to-peer -peer economics, and innovation. She has taught and inspired more than 1,000 Georgetown students. Melissa received the Ideas Worth Teaching Award, which celebrates exceptional courses that are preparing future business leaders to tackle society's largest challenges and create a more inclusive, just, and sustainable version of capitalism. Melissa also serves on the Board of Governors of the Georgetown Alumni Association and was recently given one of the university's highest honors in receiving Samuel Halsey Award at this year's Patrick Healy Dinner. But Melissa has contributed far beyond Georgetown. Last November, Essex Magazine ran an article and interview with Melissa. The first line of the article was this, if you have not yet heard of Melissa Bradley, it is time to get woke. <laughs> for those of us creating our own businesses, we could not ask for a better role model. Melissa is a successful serial entrepreneur and is managing partner of 1863 Ventures, a business development program that bridges racial equity and business acceleration across the metro area. She also serves as an advisor to the New Voices Foundation, the New Voices Fund, as well as the Halion Fund. Melissa is the former co-chair, National Advisory Council for Innovation and Entrepreneurship, and was recently named one of the most entrepreneur women investors in 2018. Melissa is also a co-founder and managing partner of Sidecar Social Finance, a social impact agency that provides impact investing, advisory, and capital services to individuals, institutions, and social enterprises. Melissa currently serves as board chair for My Way to Credit and is a founding advisor to the Dale Center for Entrepreneurs. Melissa. Thank you so much for sharing this special day with us and for inspiring us in so many ways to create a better future for ourselves and our communities. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Melissa Bradley. Thank you, sir. Y'all look good. I'm glad that I'm here. My kids are even happier because they're tired of hearing me practice this speech. Um, first, I want to say good morning. I'm from New York. I got to do better than that. Good morning. I want to thank Alyssa Lovegrove and Pietro Rivoli for engaging me in this work and inviting me here today. I want to give a special thank you and congratulations to Joshua Miller and his team for their vision, perseverance, and commitment. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Congratulations to all of the graduates for your successful completion of the Pivot Program, but more importantly, your continued growth in life. I want to acknowledge and congratulate your families for being part of this celebration, but more importantly, being part of a much longer journey. As an alum of Georgetown University, I want to welcome you to the family. I am proud of my alma mater every day and this is probably my proudest moment. As a Jesuit university, we honor and uphold cura personalis. Cura personalis is a Latin phrase that translates as care for the entire person. Cura personalis suggests individualized attention to the needs of the other. The expression is a hallmark of Ignatian spirituality that is commonly used by the Catholic Church religious order, the Society of Jesus. It is used to describe the responsibility of all of us to care for each man and woman in the community with his or her unique gifts, challenges, needs, and possibilities. Through the university's commitment to this program, 
the wider DC community, and the world at large, I am thrilled that Georgetown chose to expand its care and support of those that many others have written off, ignored, overlooked, misunderstood, or even assumed the worst. I am most proud that the University website says, Georgetown offers rigorous academic programs, as you've heard, a global perspective, exciting ways to take advantage of Washington, DC, and in my mind, most importantly, a commitment to social justice. It is good to see us at Georgetown leveraging our privilege to provide opportunity, validation, and support to those who deserve it most. Nelson Mandela said, it always seems impossible until it is done. I want to acknowledge your willingness to take a risk to be in this program. I hope that you have found a common bond with the university. As you may know, we as Georgetown recently asked to be forgiven ourselves by the descendants of the slaves who built this university. We as a community understand the need to forgive and be forgiven. Malcolm X said that education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. As I stand here today, I see the future. I see the future of higher education, where student bodies are no longer solely comprised of valedictorians and salutatorians from their respective high school classes, but rather individuals who have experience, who have mastered the art of self-reflection, have clarity of their potential, and merely need some direction on their path. As you complete this program, I see great potential for each of you individually and your communities at large. You have gained great experience at your respective employment placements. You have learned new skills, met new mentors and advisors in your employment and life, and had an opportunity to re-engage in the world of business. You have the opportunity to not only expand your own networks and communities, but expand the expectations and beliefs of those who are now your mentors, as you have exposed them to new ideas, challenges, and friendships. During this program, you've also entered the world of entrepreneurship. It is my most favorite pursuit in life. You have each developed an idea that I hope many of you will truly pursue. While entrepreneurship is hard, it is truly the backbone of our country. And while statistics show that entrepreneurship is on the decline for some, among the communities that we represent, among the communities that we come from, entrepreneurship is at the highest rates possible. African American women are starting businesses six times as fast as their white peers, and Latino businesses are the fastest growing business segment in the country. The future of your communities resides with you. The challenge is, did you know that if African American businesses were invested in, on par with their white peers, we would have created 900,000 new jobs in our local communities and contributed over $300 billion to the nation's economy. Bishop T.G. Jake said, once you have the confidence in your instincts, you must never allow other people's refusal to believe or their data to refute what you know is instinctively true. As you begin your business journey, know that you have been trained by some of the best. You are now part of an alumni community with many successes and accomplishments despite great odds. What an accomplishment and irony that individuals who in some cases have been accused of harming the community now have a chance to save them. As entrepreneurs, you have the chance to restore the vibrancy in underserved and overlooked communities through food, music, mobile detailing, employment, and opportunity. I am deeply excited to see what you do next, how you continue your journey defined by your rules, how you leverage your new skills to continue to improve yourself, your families, and your community, how you utilize your new social capital to advance your goals, but also educate and engage your new connections in your life, your vision, and your world. Each of you exemplify the quote, learning is not attained by chance. 
It must be sought for with ardor and attended to with diligence. It is important to remember that learning is not limited to books and classes. Learning is limitless as we allow ourselves to engage in conversations with those that we may otherwise ignore. It is limitless when we step outside our comfort zones and safe spaces to see the opportunities and challenges that others are experiencing. Learning is limitless when it is open to all and not treated as an overpriced commodity. Learning is endless and I look forward to continuing learning with each of you, through you, and because of you as you enter the alumni community. I am so very proud of each of you and humbled to see so many familiar faces. As a member of the Georgetown community, as a professor, as a parent of six, but most proudly a cousin of a man named Stephen Campbell who was incarcerated off and on for most of his adult life and was unable to find a program to advance his dreams and goals, I stand here in awe of your resilience, confidence, passion, and commitment. Maya Angelou said, you may encounter many defeats, but you must not be defeated. In fact, it may be necessary to encounter the defeats so you can know who you are, what you can rise from, how you can still come out of it. I hope that this program has provided you with the appropriate guidance on the path that you travel next, reinforced your faith in yourself, family, and community, as well as demonstrated and amplified your confidence and self-worth. I thank you for being signals of what is possible, for advancing and improving the narrative about and from our communities. Booker T. Washington said, success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has, or she has overcome. I want to thank you for being uniquely you. As you join the Georgetown University community, I have one ask of you. My kids are like, what, that's it, just one? Be vocal, be visible, and be valiant. Be vocal and use your voice. Be heard when you discuss the injustices of the world. Be consistent in advocating for yourself and your community. Be loud when you advocate on behalf of the needs of our communities and make sure that people understand the complexity of the depths of inequality and oppression that continue to exist. Be visible and be seen. With this certificate, stand tall for this entire community acknowledges your value. Be seen as role models, as nothing is impossible, and time is only a constraint of one's mind but not one's opportunity. Be valiant, show courage and determination. Be valiant by being present where least expected. You have now earned the right to be at all tables, not just the ones you were invited to. Continue to be courageous and share your story far and wide so that our communities can redefine success and accomplishment. Remain determined in pursuing your hopes and dreams. I close yet again by saying welcome to the Georgetown University alumni community, a community committed to service, academic excellence, and redemption. Welcome home, Hoya Saxa. I'm sorry, one more speech, <laughs> but this is a special occasion. Today is a very special day. For years, nearly 200 years, uh, my colleagues and sometimes I have adorned silly hats and uh, fancy robes to mark our students' graduations. And year after year, we've celebrated their past successes and also what they were, are going to deliver in the future. And today, we do the same. But it means much more, because you are special. You are the first cohort of the Pivot program. And so 
you are pioneers and you're helping us be pioneers as well. And given what Professor Bradley said about entrepreneurship, together we are being entrepreneurial. I hope she'll give us an A for that. <laughs> but more than that, I think because of programs like yours and because of you, people like me are very proud to belong to Georgetown because lots of schools teach and have masters and bachelor's programs, but very few schools have the pivot program. You allow us to believe in ourselves. You allow us to fulfill our mission. So congratulations and thank you. And there's something special about you. Every time Pietra came back from one of your cl classes, uh, she'd be sad to see me again, but she was always happy to have just seen you. And she'd tell me about what wonderful people you are, how you've been amplified, not reduced, by your life's experiences, about your drive and your persistence, your hunger, and your determination to make a difference to yourself and a difference to the world. So I hope as you graduate today, you have that confidence in yourself to know that you will make a difference. You will make a difference to the world. You will make a difference to the community. You will make a difference to your families. You will make a difference to yourself. And we rely on you to do that. Many universities can teach the knowledge and skills to help students advance their careers. But what is special about Georgetown is that we are distinguished by our Jesuit values, which include caring for the whole person and being women and men for others. And I hope you feel you're well equipped to succeed after graduation with the tools, the techniques, the knowledge, and the network. Yes, we are your network. But also with Georgetown's mission to serve always the common good. You know, there are many forms of social justice in the world. For us, we see business as the force for good. Business schools cannot solve the challenges of our criminal justice system or reverse the racial injustice in our society, what we can do is build bridges across our city. We can share the gift of an entrepreneurial mindset. We can share with you the mindset that we can achieve a lot together, and we can work with you to make a difference. So I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to be here, but I missed your pitch competition, and I heard it was very good. So I look forward to being a customer of Baker's Cleaning. Where's Baker's Cleaning? Of uh, Odd Kicks, that sounds interesting. <laughs> I, I like your shoes. <laughs> and Rome Digital, where's Rome Digital? Yeah. And all the businesses that you will start and help employ your neighbors and build up our communities. We look forward to having many of you return to the Venture Lab to continue to develop your business ideas or work with your internship partners into the future. You are probably the most exciting students we've had, and I hope you'll continue to be exciting alumni as well. And, but to launch the Pivot program, we had the help across the city and throughout the Georgetown community. We could not have run our program without the support of our community sponsors, the US Department of Commerce, the Mayor's Office on Returning Citizen Affairs, and the DC Department of Employment Services. And we're very grateful to be working together with these institutions to make a difference to society. But I know you also had numerous internship hosts, mentors, coaches, faculty, and even members of the Georgetown McDonough Board of Advisors, uh, Bob Flanagan, Tom Primer, who have given their time and energy. It takes a village, and we're lucky. We have a wonderful village. 
I also have deep appreciation for my vice dean, Pietro Rivoli. Uh, working with Mark Howard and the wonderful Prison and Justice Initiative, she was determined to make this happen. And regardless of the bumps along the way or the challenges, she was not going to rest until this became a reality. So I'd like you to join me in uh, giving a round of applause to both Mark and Pietra for their determination to make a difference. And of course, uh, I know along with the faculty, Alyssa, Josh, and George, uh, it's one, one thing to have an idea. My faculty always tell me I work on the clouds and they have to actually walk, walk on the ground. You've made a very grand concept a reality through your dedication, through your hard work, through your determination. So thank you all so much. So finally, I'd like to ask our Pivot Fellows to stand and join me in thanking their family and friends. To the parents, to the grandparents, to the spouses, to the siblings, to the children, to the friends, all in the audience, your support before, during, and after the Pivot journey has been very important. To the Pivot Fellows, I'd like to leave you with this. Remember, wherever life takes each of you, you're always welcome home here at Georgetown. Come home by hiring other Pivot Fellows in the future. Come home for referrals, for contacts, for advice. Come home to share your expertise your experiences as teachers, as guest lecturers. Come home to meet your colleagues, old and new. Come home to enrich what we are together. Or come home just to say hello. But come home, we'll be waiting. We'll keep the light on. For you are Georgetown. You are the heart of us now and forever. Thank you. And now I'd like to call on Pietra and Mark to the stage so that we may present our graduates with their certificates. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, I'd like to ask our Pivot Fellows to uh, line up to my right for the moment we've all been waiting for. Okay. I'll tell you a secret, I'm older than I look. Uh, <laughs> and as Paul said, we often have to put on these funny clothes. I think I've put on these funny clothes uh, for well, many dozens of these graduations, uh, many thousands of graduates. Um, there hasn't been an event in all these years that means as much to me, though, as this one. Um, I am going to call the graduates' names. You'll come across the stage. Uh, don't forget to stop for your photo. Okay. <laughs> Smile for the camera. Okay. Lawrence Baker. Devon Bell. Troy Berner. Marcus Butler.
Khadija Clifton. If you missed it, uh, Khadija was on TV this morning. Okay. <laughs> Sherry Davis. I'm not sure if this is going to be possible, uh, but I'd like you to uh, look at the shoes that Duran is wearing, uh, because these shoes are a part of his uh, brilliant business plan. Uh, Duran Doby. Jermaine Dory. Ralph Green. Marquis Hicks. Sophia McKinney. Olayemi Aladiji. We have too many hugs. I was told to slow it down. Okay. <laughs> Corey Pollard. Yousef Rab. <laughs> and finally, Tyrone Walker. Next, I'd like to invite George Chochos back up to give the benediction, and then Alyssa Lovegrove to give closing remarks. Thank you. Can we have one more round of applause for our Pivot Fellows for this program? for reimagining what's possible. Let us once again assume the posture of our choosing a gracious God who makes beauty from ashes. We are grateful for witnessing a truly momentous occasion. We now send our pivot fellows into a world that needs their brilliance and their passion. A world that too often defines humanity in dehumanizing terms. But let our fellows know 
that there are no barriers too high or challenges too great that can prevent their flourishing when they believe in themselves. Let this day be a reminder of their value and human dignity and their capacity for greatness. We are grateful for this institution that has made a commitment to partnering with those returning to our communities to draw out their genius. Let their lives become the example that can change the way this country views the hundreds of thousands of people coming back to communities and provide hope through their stories and opportunities through their businesses and careers so that one day we will witness the end of this era of mass and hyper incarceration. May our fellows' lives be the answer to the questions facing our time. Amen. I know I speak for all of my colleagues when I say that the experience of working with the Pivot Fellows has been the most meaningful of our entire professional careers. We are humbled by your spirit, your desire to create opportunities for other people in your communities, your willingness to explore new ideas and new worlds, and although today marks the end of the academic program, we sincerely hope that you still understand that we are very much here to support you in any way that we can, and we look very much forward to seeing where the journey takes you. So with that, this concludes the formal part of our ceremony. Just a, a, a bit of housekeeping. Um, please allow the graduates to leave the room and the faculty. We're gonna have a photograph on the bridge in a moment. Um, and then I would like to invite everyone to please stay behind here in Fisher and join us for a celebratory luncheon. Thank you very much for coming. Good afternoon.